Well, welcome back, one and all, to the EMEA Masters. We just witnessed a slow but steady into explosive end of a game between Isuba and, of course, Anonymo, with Anonymo coming out on top. Now coming up, of course, it's Unicorns of Love Sexy Editions versus LDLCOL, the three-time LFL Championships winners in a row. Looking into the Group C standings and schedule, we saw, of course, Anonymo win that first game. We've still got a few more games to go. We do so, of course, this will be our second game of the day. So it's second down on the docket there. These are the games. If you did miss this earlier, that will be shown on this screen. First three games are, of course... Uh, actually, no, this is just entirely Group C. Yes, it is. I keep getting confused. Ah, this is entirely Group C. This is all the games you're going to see uh, across multiple channels. We're going to be cutting off the, after the first three games of Group C and then hang over to Group B for the last half of the day. Indeed. And you were even told by production. like No, I know. I'm just really shocking. bad at listening. Shocking. Probably not a great side, but here we no, are. No, it's not. <laughs> but hey, we, it's something I've got to live with. Indeed it is. But this game in particular, huge, huge game. Um, we'll start up with a lineup here for, I believe it's LDLCOL. Um, again, the LFL champions, despite a rebuild. Again, this team is one of the most storied, if not the most storied in the LFL. And they just can't be stopped. Now, this is a team which really exemplifies uh, French excellence within the yep. ERLs. This team has consistently hit at the very top of the tree in the regional kind of level, and then also coming through into uh, the EMEA Masters of the last years. They have done well. The thing is, though, that's been their last kind of crowning achievement from this era of LDLC, which they've not quite reached. They've gone back to the drawing board. They've rebuilt their roster after, of course, Yike, their star jungler, left for G2 and is doing amazingly there. And Ika, of course, left for, I believe, yep. Aegis as well. They've rebuilt against very different, around very different players. They have, of course. They lost Exic and Dos to SK, Pro SK as well, but enough about LDLC OLA. Let's talk about the Unicorns of Love, the sexiest version of them. They've also been doing incredibly well over in the Prime League. Last Amir Masters as well, they were looking very scary. And they're looking to try and return the favor here again in spring 2020. And I love how these teams have actually quite mirrored storylines. Yes. Too. This is another team yes. which has also rebuilt to some degree. I mean, no more Ruby on this team. No more Shiganari. No more um, Scarface, of course, on their top side as well. This is a team which has also rebuilt around some very powerful key players, particularly their mid-jungle Korean imports. We've got Peach and Mask. Mask is a player who I've heard... I, I was chatting with... Serious some, stuff I, I, about. So this is the thing. I actually kind of forgot who told this to me, but I was speaking to them and they said, hey, I was speaking to Febivan, who of course is on SK Prime and is someone who played against Mask an awful lot. And he said that Mask is the player who has pushed him hardest in lane since he was playing internationally against Faker. This That's mid laner and this mid lane jungle from Unicorn to Love Sexy Edition is absolutely nothing to be sniffed at. Finally, this is a, uh, a region, or rather, this is a team which continually hit against these LFL teams, even in their era of dominance. They would love to take a scalp of the LFL first seed in their first game of groups. And while the true frontrunners of this tournament have been yet to be decided on paper, on the docket coming into the tournament, this is a potential finals rematch, depending. This Ooh, could be a potential finals match. Fun. We could be getting a preview of some very late tournament mm -hmm. uh, matchups here. Bands coming in initially, Jace off the table, Yone from the side of Unicorns. Yeah. Because particularly uh, when Peach plays stuff like the Sejuani as well, yeah. uh, Sejuani, Jace, or something like Maokai Jace, very, very powerful combinations to give Masks some extra space to do some damage and also just play around that laning phase very early. So no surprise that has been taken off the table. Lee Sin also going to be removed from Peach as well, trying to remove some of the more potent mid-jungle combinations from USC. Yeah, of course, inside of LDLC as well. Like this is a, their solo lane is a two we're very familiar with. Of course, their They're Rise and Backlands yeah. were over in NLC last year and quite a lot about them. And things like the Yone, Backlands most played this year. It's done a lot of time on that He was a big Yasuo player too. He was yeah. indeed. He like is one of those people who likes those Did melee you know that brothers? Crazy, Yasuo and Yone. Crazy. May have done a 1v1 of that. I won. On did. stage. It was great. We'll, we'll have to talk less about that. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, but of course, some of those other bands on the other side looking towards the like Rakan. Very potent right now. Arguably the more powerful part of the Lovers duo as well yeah. in some regards, I think number of analysts have been trying Depends. to figure that out. And, and the big thing is, Zyrocon is very powerful in Red 1-2 because it's a very strong blind pick. It gives a lot of players, I mean, both these supports are really good at that champion. And we'll, we'll talk more about Zyrocon when we get into game as well. This guy is really, really good from LDLC. Um, but we'll get to that a little bit later. When we've got a bit more space to first picks being considered by LDLC. That Annie flex pick between 
mid and support. It has basically been mm. flexed between everything. It actually does feel like Backlund has been the one which has been picking this up more often than not. I don't think has actually played a game of it. The thing is that like, when it comes to teams like this, when it comes to players like this, particularly a surprise kind of um, hotshot player like Zoel is coming into this team, Sometimes they just have this extra thing in the back pocket coming into the bigger stages. So, Annie, flex pick technically, they're likely to go into that mid lane. The response here may well be that ever-present Zeri is locked in. I suspect we might be seeing either a jungler or a support here, mm. which, of course, is no real surprise. Lulu's still up, and the Zeri Lulu it's not less as less potent than it was earlier in the year, but something like yeah. that, or a north, just to make some sense here. Yeah, so... Oh, oh Peach, wow, never mind that. Uh, I mean, jungle, we're going towards the Graves. You remove some of those pressure junglers. Okay, Peach will do the carry himself. Graves, this will be the seventh champ time to play this champion in this spring. So both of these... Uh, talk about Mask in terms of the apocryphal stories about yeah. that. Peach, also just really, really good. So giving him some carry threat is not something a lot of teams play right now. There are some players which are kindred players. Graves is coming back, though, with a bit of force. I think it was Pabu that was talking about this on mm. Twitter in terms of going Eclipse, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, where you just become... That sounds Incredibly bursty, but also incredibly hard to kill because it basically bridges the gap between Eclipse being a better mythic item than something like the Shield Bow, but then also still getting the Bloodthirst yeah. kind of viability as well. See what happens in game with that one. On the other side, Zaya has still been very, very powerful. We've kind of moved past Lucian Nami a little bit now in terms of global meta. Some teams are still very good at it, obviously, but the Zeri and the Zaya we saw that in the last game. Expect these two AD carries to stay meta, stay present with basically all of our drafts. Yeah, kind of that Lucian Nami falling away from the A tier instead. The response will be something like a Jarvan as well. Mm. That's probably a jungle pick, but there is strictly a little bit of room where that could go things like top lane, if but we see it as a counter yeah. into things like Ken. Well, it depends if we see that cannon, and of course Venera is a player which has played an awful lot of carries. The, mm. the cannon hasn't played been played so much. Also, judging from what I've seen of other teams playing the cannon, not been an ERL specialty. No. Some of our top players have looked good with it. Ragnar, for instance, has looked very good with it. Um, seen a couple of other players kind of struggle around that, though. Instead, going to be like Asante. Blind pick, powerful bruiser in that top side. Technically can be played in that mid lane as well, um, but I do expect that to be headed towards top lane. It's certainly a pick that Venera is no stranger to. This yeah. pick got nine games in already. This will be the tenth. Um, see where, of course, they end up putting it. As we said, there is still that room to flex, but I think really the spicy part is that is that Graves, as we said. We're not expecting that uh, R2, I think. Yeah, I was going to say that they're like, Maybe you leave this a little bit later. It's a but they, throw down, release a shot. a little bit, but I think also when you're kind of looking at players with such large mid lane pools, particularly back from having that Damn. large lane pool as well, um, if you, it doesn't even matter necessarily if your mid lane is the one with the smaller champion pool. Just seeing what the enemy picks so you can at least consider what you're going into that mid lane mm -hmm. matchup allows things to be a bit more obvious. Of course, we said it's likely to be the Annie there, but still kind of holding everything um, kind of in flex picks for now just to give themselves that red side counter pick most value from it. And then we're seeing some of these bands uh, coming through in phase two as well. Mm. Cries is Jack, something he was playing even last year, something he's very comfortable on. I think it's his most played champion this year as well, just taken off the board, understandably. Uh, on the other side, it's some of those well, good Cries... matchups with the Zeri that are taken off the board so far by LDLC. Well, I remember when Cries was playing over in JDXL, of yeah. course, um, last year when we, we were casting them in the NLC. <laughs> the funny thing is, we're going to be talking a lot about Backlund in regards to that too, because he was also there. It's, yeah. it's really cool to see all these players just pop up in different teams, especially when they start to see that. As well. Um, but Cries always was a bit of a carry player. He was a great Camille player. I remember his Vladimir quite fondly Zillion as well. Top. Zillion Top is one which was very unique to Cries. But still, he's a player which does play a lot of these carries. Um, I'm sorry. And actually. I'm so oh, right, that's been banned. You know what? I've kind of given up the ghost in terms of like being happy with pro players' RES. So. <laughs> the champ the champion I should bring it up. Actually, just, 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 can we just ignore Broke that? that wound. Because we're going to go see the uh, Leona locked in for less six. So that is going to be engaged threat towards that bot side. They were lacking a bit of engaged threat anyway. It was likely to come through. And again, as we said, leaving that last pick towards potential mid laners. Yes, Clot hovering the Nidalee right now for white. No, that's locked in right now, but you never know. It does feel like there's a bit of cooking happening in this draft. Uh, Aren't debating potentially a support pick for Zoellis, which would lock that Annie into mid lane for Backland. Mm. They've got themselves the Renata, and when you've got a couple people who are going to be getting in nice and close, like the Leona, like the Graves, hell, even something like Zeri is not the longest range champion. Mm. You can see the value that hostile takeover in particular can have. Also, it's just a really good laning pick, yeah. too, right? And particularly when you've got um, players like Classic and Funky on the other side. I love the name Funky, by the way. It's a great just cool name. Just going to stop off and quickly shout that one out. It's a great name. Just holding them down and allowing someone like Yaskler, who we know to have such a 
powerful um, carry potential to have a stronger laning phase very much gets them on the board. On the other side, Veneur, no stranger to this pick. You see a tank matchup. Fiora feels like a very strong answer to it. It would leave you lacking some ability to uh, play towards that top side. Of course, I mean, you know the Cassandra's there. We talked about the uh, Cassandra being likely to be flexed into the uh, top lane anyway. Uh, yeah, likely to not be missed, yes. even though the option was there. Does mean that Mask is going to go towards that LeBlanc. Very high burst damage combo. If you, LeBlanc goes in, finds the target, and then the Graves ult flies over the top. Indeed, for the side of LDL, COL, they've got themselves frontline, they've got themselves engaged, they've got themselves some burst. The other side, probably not dissimilar, they're perhaps a little bit more pick oriented, but again, two comps that are similar-ish in terms of how they want to approach games. Yeah, I think that uh, if Unicorns find themselves some angles to kind of get past the Scion in these mm. team fights, I think that's where they can get some value, particularly because Zeri also can kind of join those attempts, fly over a wall, catch them out of position. Almost saw that from Danny in the last yeah. game, of course, there. Zeri. It didn't quite work out for him, but heck, he got a little bit close. So you've got Mask flying over the fight, trying to catch someone out. You've got a Graves up, which can follow from quite a way. Leona, which can ult over wall, stuff like that too. I think a lot of this game is going to depend on the positioning of basically everyone but Cry is thinking about it is a little yeah. cut, slow to take down but ldlc they'll want to make sure they have vision control they have positioning and they're not getting caught out over walls by unicorns playmakers so yeah, of course i think eyes also turn towards peach that is a first round graves it is that is perhaps the one point of true discrepancy in terms of playstyle you've got the Jarvan versus that graves and i think if you are going to pick that up you need to make it work because graves is very much a i am the carry now kind of champion yeah, I was about to say, there's. I, see, normally I say, like, oh, there's no iron team, but there isn't, like, Vladimir or Darius. Yes. Those famous Sailor yeah. champions. Graves, I can't even do that one with, but hey, he's definitely got. He's, he's uh, taking things into his own hands. And particularly with a game like this, against one of. You expect to be the front runners in this group, your own team, and then, of course, mm. LDLC on the other side for Peach. Um, this would be big symbolically as well. Typically, um, Unicorns of Love, they've fallen into the hands of a couple of these LFL teams. Last year when they were in groups, they took a game off of Vitality B in the group stage, and then they couldn't quite capitalize on that afterwards. It got very, very close um, in terms of like their own group stage performances. Would love to take a win over the LFL here. They would indeed. And on to the rift we go. LDLC OL versus Unicorns of Love, sexy edition. <laughs> There's a real world, guys, where this is a preview of some very big best of fives a lot further into the tournament. A taster, a preview, if you will. So far, an interesting level one where Peach has to flash right on out. Graves, not very happy to have to blow that summon at level one. No, hops over. This to me screams like some preparation has been done for this Graves because... Uh... You look at that pick, and it's something like the Vi as well. We used to see that, or something like Rakan mm -hmm. in that level one, where you can kind of hop over with one of your mobility skills. Level one, LDLC collapse on him, Peach, not wanting to get caught out too early. And of course, generally speaking, you start the E on Graves level one. So I don't know whether he used it to get into the bush and therefore had it on cooldown. It's a relatively yes, long did, cooldown yes. early on. Fact, we saw it on our screen. I, 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 was, I, was, the I was busy making cool entrance you. references. I could I could have corrected that for you, but I chose not. To. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, cool. Is this the revenge for last? Game? Absolutely. I. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Uh, nice to see my brother throws me under the bus. In fairness, I had it coming. So yeah, you, you did. Uh, <laughs> Back into the game. Yes. Still. Good level one summoner blown by LDLC OL. I don't know whether they will have spotted that the summoner is popped, but either way, that summoner's grabbing is down. I'm gonna head on over to start up this blue buff early on, and it's a slight change in uh, starting location, perhaps where we were early on. White, though, is gonna be on his own blue buff, and it'll be uh, opposite jungle start for both these yeah, And I know that in the first two drafts today, and across that, across a bit of the comp uh, competition, we're seeing a lot of the primary mid jungle junglers being removed, stuff like Vi, Wukong, bit of the Lee Sin as well being removed as well. It has still felt, though, even with those champions being removed, I mean, LeBlanc Graves already talked about how, despite the Graves not being a CC early ganking jungler, can very much brawl yeah. when he's particularly wants to get that level 6. And then on the other side, Jarvan, of course, historically a very good... Oh, we've got okay there. How far we go? He's going to pull it back with the Intoggle Strike. He's getting flipping close. Grass Prox trading. Has to flash away. And that's a big win for Christ. But now the HP bar is so low, he's not really bad. Has to flash himself. Both summoners popped before three minutes are in. Love it when you've got these teams, which again, they want to make this a statement match. More the EMEA Masters Ooh. claim something for their region, claim something against, as we said, these teams which have got such a history of excellence. Those early fights can uh, give you some interesting yes. ways to play around them a little later. I don't think both these top laners were expected to blow flash quite that early. Junglers now have to take that into account. Uh, both of these top laners known for their carries. Again, Vanor, big Fiora player, Christ, big Jax player and the like. Playing these tank matchups very aggressively, despite the uh, difference in champions, perhaps. So, Vanoa actually getting the crash in on this wave. 
Sniper is at least going to be able to pick that one under turret. So let's see what these junglers are looking towards as well. Once again, we saw junglers starting on opposite sides of the map. So they're not going to run into each other at the same scuffle spawn. Peach has got pushing top lane if he does want to look into river and then looking towards maybe dropping a ward on the other side of that jungle. Early vision control against something like a um, Jarvan was very, very important. He can get himself some different gank paths, and that is why Peach is currently looking in towards the enemy side of the jungle, using that blaster. Not the blaster. It's the Spryer's Bloom. That one. Dropping a ward deep into the enemy jungle just to make sure that white is not going to have quite as uncontested control of where he is off of vision. I'm going to wrap right back around, having used both of his early vision wards, head over towards the Scuttle Crab. Very happily picked that up for himself. Because Gray is able to knock the crab into the wall, which does allow you to uh, uh, keep it in place a little bit easier sometimes. It used to be better, like in previous seasons. Yeah, because you used to knock shield off the shield. Yeah, exactly. Just auto -attack. It was very incredibly, helpful. Incredibly busted is what that was. All those junglers out there was like, I can't break the shield. Before Smite used to break the shield, it was very that was what? Oh, okay. Good. Ooh, big engage right. on the tower as well. Gonna throw down the ultra later. Jesper needs to back on out of here, taking a lot of damage. But in the end, it's just a HP bar trade. Points around. But I don't think they'll be looking for a dive right now. Although the moment I say that, he's now going to be on vision. Yeah, and he's on the bot side of the map. Hmm. He was seen in that river as they went for that trade. They went without with full information. Peach is coming down. Peach is yeah. also going to be spotted on vision. So once again, um, as we saw in the last game between, of course, the two other teams in this group, it's been a little bit slow in the early game. Maybe first game of group stage jitters a little bit. Just trying to say, look, let's just play out this early game as uh, closely as we can. Don't give that first, uh, don't give that first mistake opportunity to play. Like, you know. I was about to talk about storylines and narratives, but we're not going to have time for that. As Jaskla and Zoelis get a nice flash out of uh, Lexic there with a phenomenal little handshake. So. That's going to be, obviously, an awkward summoner being removed. But of course, with the go hex flash, you care a little bit less about that. This was a lane which LDLC picked to be lane dominant. Yeskler has been, of course, a very strong carry player in the past. Of course, he was back up on SK Gaming last year. Mm. Had some great moments, especially when Callista came back. So that was great to see. Yes. Picking up that pick again. Of course, him and Treats were the, uh, uh, the Callista Jarvan lane. They used <laughs> to play that a fair bit. But hey, um, down here, I felt blaming himself a title for that. See if he can claim himself a title a little bit higher up in this mid lane. Mask hits level 6. Stun just being used from Backland. Mid lane jungle TV2. Actually something to be used here, especially with that Mimic. Ooh. Oh, oh but... Cross, but it's a bait! Because look who else is here. It's White Flash out of Mask. Backland doesn't have to pop him. It's now Peach is over. He doesn't have the collateral damage yet though. So in the end the summoner is blown, but the HP bar difference is in favour of Mask. So, White just making sure that Backland can at least survive under this turret. Backland, of course, uh, now back-to-back -back champion of two different yes. ERLs. One with Dusty in the NLC last split. Um, and they, of course, went the five games versus LDLC. Oh, yes. in that, you see, I remember that. I, I remember being there on the day and thinking, heck, that was really close, especially from LFL first seed. You can't beat him, join him, apparently. You can't beat him, join him. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, I, I hadn't thought about that up until this point. I was like, huh, yeah, Backland sat here. Doing what is quite a rare achievement, and getting two, two champions in two different regions in two different splits. I mean, LDL COL have been doing something very rare, having won the LFL three times in a row now. Seth, uh, and yeah. again, having had to go for a complete rebuild of the roster with so many of their members going off to the LEC or other ERL teams, and they've also been the team that, despite being from the strongest region, in the ERLs, historically at least. For the last era, yes. Yeah, for... Plus, the fact that, generally speaking, they've been the team that have often been tipped to win the whole damn tournament. They've come in and they haven't won uh, the, the Emir Masters since a long, long time ago. So I'm, I'm struggling to remember the exact date, but not really in the era of LFL dominance, that's for sure. And it does feel like over the last few times, at Emir Masters, they haven't succeeded in the way they would like, but enough. Talking about this as Mask hit with the Tibbers, does get to distort on out. A little bit dicey there, but yeah, for the psych of LDLC, that they have been that team that have had a great regional dominance. They've not really had the same success at Amir Masters relative to expectations, at least. Yeah, they've honestly, been the favorites. Winning yeah. the whole damn thing. They've never managed to like, capitalize on being the favorites of this tournament. Um, maybe, of course, things can change with the player names changing as well, despite the organization being the same. On the other side, though, Unicorns love Sex Edition. Have to chat a little about, bit about them because, what, LDLC won three splits back to yes. back? Yes. Um, Unicorns have beaten them. They've done more than that. They've over doubled that. If you include the LCL titles they had before that yes. point, in the kind of in terms of the, uh, the the impact which Sheepy has oh, had on this organization yes. as well, 
I believe it's seven splits back to back. That's seven nuts. splits, including the LCL, including the Prime League as well. This team, if we're talking about ERL excellence and just talking about excellence in general, I can't think of any team anywhere which has done set or any individual attached to these teams, which has done seven splits back to back. That's Absolutely a insane run of form. I, I know that um, it was kind of tweeted out a little bit ago, and I was just kind of sat there going. You know what, they're right. It doesn't necessarily easily come to mind, but because you expect this level of excellence when the Unicorns have played in the various leagues that they have done. For them, though, it would be, again, another feather in the cap to go that step beyond in the ERLs in the way that Prime League has really yet to do in this era. For sure. And it's worth keeping our eyes on because both these teams have been so used to excellence, so used to being one of the favorites for the tournament as Harold being started. Mass gets a chunk out onto White. Just felt like Peach would be able to get a hold of that. Uh, and Harold claimed by Peach. White, though, will take this opportunity to maybe look towards the bottom lane. Level 6 is beginning to come on through. The hostile takeover comes on, but it's immediately cleansed away. Featherstorm comes out, Blade Caller. Gets a chunk. Here come the rest of LDLC, though. The mid jungle around. Horns of Love need to canter for the hills. Maybe they need to make it a full gallop, though. Is White looking for the flag and drag? And there's the flash on out to safety from Zeri. Okay, so it's going to be. Fairly good response from Funky and Fuxix to get themselves away from that tower. They're going to lose plates, but they're not going to lose their lives. They clear out one more wave than maybe they would have um, been like to be given by LDLC. LDLC would like to deny as many resources as possible. Yet to see a first blood, yet to see ourselves first tower going down. We've seen some plates, we've seen a dragon go down. But I think as this stands, when you've got the farming jungle of this graves getting online, you're fairly happy with that from the side of the Unicorns. The one thing which they're going to have to keep an eye on is the fact that Yaskala is starting to get into a pretty dangerous position getting ahead in this lane phase. Shout out to Peach there as well, despite having the uh, the leash ranges made a lot shorter to make double <laughs> camping harder. Still pulls it off there between the Grump and the Blue Buff. Always good to see them min-maxing on things like Graves. <laughs> Absolutely true. I kind of forgot about that. I haven't seen Graves for a little while, so I was thinking, ah, this is what you used to do on the Graves in the Hecarim. Kind of like keep them both uh, aggroed at the same time. It's definitely not as quick or as easy to do as it was in previous splits. We kind of little camps a little bit easier. Um, but that's kind of what we've been reduced yeah. to talking about in terms of that micro, because actually the big players of the game have largely, once again, been fairly muted. It has been about sticking in these lanes, not showing that first mistake to be made. Lead in that jungle trade for the lead in the bot side. For sure. And we've seen summoners, but like we saw that very tempestuous level one top. Oh, side. wow. That's the best thing in the early game. I, Ooh, mean, we, I mean, well, we saw some summoners blown in the mid lane where it got quite close between uh, Mask good. and Backlin, but that's kind of been it. No one's really committed all the way as yet. We'll get we'll talk about it. Chain is good. Flash, and in Blade. Is this it? The start back for Backlund is good, but a final auto! It's not enough, but he gets out alive. Oh my word, I didn't quite see how low that went. 15 HP, maybe even lower, but that's 15 more HP that than he Jay. needed. Herald's gonna be dropped at the same point. No teleport to get back into lane from Backlund. See if Sion can make his way down. No, doesn't look like it. Just give me that Herald drop. Mass looking to pick up some of that gold from the top. One H. P. We yeah, heard okay. from production. I definitely didn't see how low that HP went then. <laughs> that is remarkable. Backland surviving oh, by a sliver, the smallest possible margin. But still, first blood eludes either team. That is why you pop your potions, folks. Whew. Gets away from that one. But again, you can see that Unicorn's starting to pull out some advantages through this mid jungle duo as well, which is actually thinking about historically LFL mid jungles versus the primary mid jungle something which LFL will come out ahead of. Matt and Peach looking to start things off on a very good foot for Unicorns, at least in this early game. Still though, they're gonna take this opportunity with some of the resets coming on through our LDLC to head over towards this dragon, but down comes Peach, down comes Lechik. They're gonna try and find some damage too, but the dragon's gone. Come up fight afterwards, send it blade in, but now the turnaround begins to come on through the solid fire. But that massive collateral damage in Backland is deleted from the rift. First blood finally secured. Of course, it's by Graves. This round one pick beginning to pay some dividends. Pike still continues funky, begins to get funky with it, throwing out that first five, but it is just going to be the one kill in trade for the dragon. Okay, so extra gold going over to the unicorns, but going to be those two dragons to the side of LDLC. Sadly for them, it is of course going to be that uh, Chemtech Soul. It's good for Sion, pretty good for them, and of course, when you're trying to survive around these low health numbers as a tank, that can be quite valuable, but on the whole, you would have wished for something a little bit different at that point, so maybe unicorns get away. Lucky one there. Um, as we said, high burst damage coming in from the mid jungle of the unicorns. That LeBlanc diving in, the Graves adding some bursts in as well, despite him not being a CC jungler. Best CC is death. Is that a couple of attempts in lane, and then one finally succeeds in the river. Third time is, in fact, Char. They will get that kill. It's on to the Graves as well, which is great news for Peach, who 
is doing relatively well in that jungle matchup, up 1,400 gold, which is a big deal on Graves, who yes. does like to get um, towards those items. And it is going to be the Gore Drinker as well. So it's not going to be something like the Eclipse, kind of Lethality Bursty kind of stuff. It's not going to be something as crit. Had seen some um, kind of some thoughts about having the, um, you know, we're talking about the Bloodthirst and the Infinity Edge's second and third items. Maybe having something like the Gore Drinker first can help with that too. It's more immediate healing. Um, or something like the Eclipse gives you that shield, but with yeah. the Omnivamp gone, it's got uh, some less capabilities onto some different uh, channels that use it. But still, gonna get himself a red buff steal as well, hoovering through jungle camps at this point in a way that only the Grace can. Use that Gordrinka to get that out and use the funky plan Whee! to get out of that funky jungle camp. Just because it's a player called Funky yeah, doesn't mean we can it's use on it for the mind, Sam. Okay. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna have like Groovy Zillion popping Groovy out. Groovy Zillion. <laughs> Groovy, Groovy Zillion needs to be played I, I by have, Funky. I have to say, though, that the splash art change made it slightly less funky, slightly more terrifying. Hey, I mean, the, that, there that, is something man, very alarming about that splash that, art, that, I that, that man, after the, I don't know what's Look, changed. Lollipop it <laughs> used to be by far the most terrifying like, skin in like, the game. It's you know, for me, that, yeah. For me, Groovy Zillion is like when people talk back to how they thought the 70s was to how it actually it was. was yeah, like, <laughs> expectations versus reality, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like original Woodstock versus Woodstock 99. <laughs> There was a great couple of documentaries on that, you know. I knew you were going. Yeah. I, well, I was very. Enjoy I was. I enjoyed that documentary quite a lot. So. I'm, I'm very happy for you. Yeah, that was good. Maybe we, we can talk about you know League of Legends. Uh, I, I suppose. So. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose you can, just because you're asked. Uh, what I wanted to talk about potentially a little on, bit was, you was no actual spot lane of LDLC OL has been doing very, very well. As I said, they've got a lot of plates early. It's a big CS lead right now for Yeska. Of course, there's been a couple little looks in from the the laners, but. My eyes actually want to turn up to Zuelis, who is oh, another one of these talents that LDLC somehow unearth. This team has been a factory for so many names and have become legends in Europe and around the world. They may well have found another one. Goes in Div 2, has now come up to Div 1, has won the LFL, was the MVP for the finals. We were chatting with the likes of Lawrence uh, and Hanifai, who are telling us, like, this guy is really insane. The real he deal. He is really, really special. And certainly with his lane partner this game, of course, is a veteran in Yeskla, but is playing really damn well across Alifala, now looking to repeat that performance on the international stage. And it can be hard to kind of compare that level of competition to then going up against, like I said, the, the, the ERL overall kind of tournaments as well, where the level of competition tends to step up. It was actually a bit debatable in the past because, you know, the LFL was such a strong so region. Good, yeah, like, oh, you know, hard to win the LFL than it is to win the VMAX. Right. So, yeah, maybe you could have said that. And then Heretics won the last tournament. So you think, oh, maybe there are some really good teams out there. And of course, one of them is as well on the other side of the screen. But still, um, stepping up to this level of competition. So us having a strong laning pace so far. Yasplit has himself first game down towards that bot side. Not going to be a plate for that last one. But still, that is keeping the goal even enough because uh, jungle matchup. Of course, we said that it was likely to go the way, the way of Graves, as it always does. But still, Azaya ahead of the game. Very, very terrifying to start closing down. As you were saying from Draft, Sam, actually. I mean, you picked this one. Yeah. Give you this one. Low range champions from the Unicorns. If you go low range into those feathers, um, expect some feathers. sort of literally last game. Yeah. <laughs> Pattern recognition, we call it. Well, indeed. What, what do you know? It's a, it's a sample size. We've got two games. That's, that's been enough, wow, right? Wow, that's... There's that, no error bars on that. I, I absolutely love statistics in League of Legends. Mm, I love judging stuff off of statistics from like if, two or three games. If you can't tell, because I know he's British, he is being sarcastic. I am, in fact, being sarcastic. Um, as it happens, spent a large amount of time working with statistics because I, I have a background in physics and certain science. For those that don't, you, you do so. Well, what do you Hopefully. think of astrology? Uh, oh, don't, don't, <laughs> yeah, Only when Aurelian Sol's on the rim. Only when he's on uh. the rim. That's when we get to look about that. Well, the stars might be aligning towards the spot side of the map. 10 seconds towards Dragon Vision Control from LDLC. And if they can invite Unicorns into diving onto the Zaya, maybe things can work out for them. Unicorns, they want to find different angles. They want to find ways past the Scion and onto the carries where they can find them. One of the break points last game as well. So point on the line, but Herald in the infantry of Peach to try and buy some space and some uh, priority in mid lane, Mask likely. is currently on the bot lane. Really interested to see what Mask does as this uh, long. Because he's got potentially an angle elsewhere. He's separated from the rest of his team, but he has a fair amount of burst. Gone towards the Leandris first. It's going to be a bit more damage over time. Gives you more ability to maybe damage something like the sound. Mask, beginning trade, and it throws down. That's too bad. All out goes, goes no, but he's very deep. Needs to flash on out. White now looking to get into the back end of this. 
Yes, because going to avoid that attempted pullback with the Interrupter Strike to part three. The hostile takeover, oh. though, from Zoella, we highlight him, and he throws down a monstrous ultimate that secures a kill in the mid lane. It'll stop the Herald coming on through, and that means it's becoming increasingly challenging to contest for this dragon. LDLT will head on over and look to claim their prize. But Unicorn's played that fight far too fast. Vanur going in feels very disconnected from the rest of the team. Mass was Chunking damage into a shield on Fryzer. They're sticking around, maybe looking for a steal. Double Distort comes on through Venor. Now back to full HP, has teleported back in. Peach at half HP, has flash, but needs to come in. It's still that 4v5, Fryzer they can load. The Ethereal Chain, so much damage. Oh, oh my god! It's still secured, it got very close. Fryzer flashes on out, still alive, burning, but not dead. Peach hopping on through, beginning to throw out the shotgun shells. But it ain't hunting season! The bird wins out over the hunter. It'll be a one for one overall, but now the chase for Mask can start coming on through. White gets out alive on a one for one, but the dragon secured. The very definition of using your HP as a resource. Run those right down into the red. Backlin surviving a one HP earlier. Can't quite do the same this time, but the rest of the team can. Peach can't quite get it done. Gets shut down in that fight as well. Go back into replay to see exactly how that happened again. This is after things got a bit awkward before this, right? The Leona died off, killed off by that Renata ultimate. The LDLC, they hold their ground. They manage to avoid just enough of the damage. Fry's flashing out to safety. Does feel like this is a big, big fight. That kind of sees the Unicorns into an awkward spot now where they don't really get the gold they would like to at this point to combat what is that Soul Dragon picked up by LDLC. The Soul Point, rather. I feel like the word calculated has been thrown out a few times in all chat by LDLC members at this point. How many times have we seen these ridiculously that, low HP what, escapes? It's, it's that meme for Unicorns. It's like I'm doing a thousand calculations per second, but they're all wrong. They can't <laughs> quite get the kills. They just can't quite get oh. them. It's damn close. This is the level of kind of um, the fine margins there that yes. you kind of expect between um, teams. We expect to be close rivals with each other from you know, first seeds from these various regions around the ERLs. LDLC coming out ahead with that fight at least. Indeed. We're left with a game state that is still close gold-wise, but that sole point being secured is a huge, huge deal. And both teams scale pretty well, but I fear that LDLC probably have the better front line, all things said and done, having got the Scion and yeah. the Renata to, to punch out at the, against these people who are trying to dive forward. Also worth noting that Kryos has gone for the heart steal on Scion, the double synergy between, mm. you know, you see up in the stacks. I mean, we use the LDLC. So oh, if you look at the, the, that's the, a lot of stacks. If you look at the little number uh, on Kryos there, that's his, that's his soul furnace stacks going up. That's the amount of, you know, HP he's going to be getting oh alongside days. the heart steal and grasp. That's a whole lot of HP to bring to bear. It's not the Jack Show for multi-man kind of HP draining, but it does give you a lot of bang for your buck. And especially when you're trying to hold the line, I guess, against people like the Graves as well. It's like, I want to burst you I, out. Hard now, to burst but, out SI on with about 30,000 HP. But now I want to see Backland play the Graves. So he's got more bang for his back. back. Oh. Look, uh, look, it's bad I'll, 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 look, I'll, I was I'll, expecting I'll a back, Sweet Boys reference. We were joking about that one before. Backlund's back. Backlund's back, all right, in yeah. the mid lane. He's got himself that stun charge up. He's gone for the Andrews as well. We're seeing a lot of these mid laners, which used to maybe go towards Rod of Ages for the victim in the last game as well. Sometimes just say, look, got to have some power a little earlier yeah. in the game. Leandri still gives you some pretty decent damage. It doesn't give you the HP component mm. that it used to, but it's a better one out spike in a number of different styles. Slight item discrepancies coming on through. The Graves up a healthy amount, and therefore got that additional item in the Black Cleaver over the Java. The problem is on the other side, with how important AD carries have been in the current meta, having your Zyre a full item ahead of the Zeri is a big, big difference. Navori plus Kraken Slayer is a pretty decent item spike for Jeskla, who is very much in a position to carry this game. It is so. What is going to upset Yesler enough? So there are two things you can do. You either make sure Zai isn't part of the fight, or you get to the Zai so comprehensively that they can't defend themselves in the correct kind of moment. They're very, very good. Zai is a champion at kind of fighting in one angle when everyone's going into the feathers, and you can kind of rearrange things. In this game, though, doesn't even feel the need for the Gale Force goes for the Kraken Slayer to say, look, you're going to be diving onto me. I'm going to get the most damage I can do onto the likes of these lower range tanks of Leona and the Cassante trying to close me down. Unicorns keeps coming back to this one fact. Can you find an angle onto the yes, Asclep? As it stands, mid lane out of turret down from LDLC means that there's some angles to put some vision into the enemy jungle. But if you're looking down at that mini map, no wards around those kind of mid lane jungle entrances from the Unicorns just yet. Now, vision going on around this Baron, it oh, started. You. They're listed. Uh, to see, I love it when observers listen. It's really cute. That, thank you for that. They know. I know we kind of do like. They know. It's time to come on over. <laughs> Down to two thirds. One 
half of the HP gone. They're coming on over. Peach needs to get too their late. It's too late. It's going to go down. They've snuck it away. LDLCOL. It's a beautiful play to sneak that Baron ahead of the Chemtech Soul spawning. And this is a big, big moment because this will tide LDLC over to the next Dragon spawn. And Unicorns, it felt like they didn't have the vision control to contest the midwave. They didn't even have the vision control to secure any vision around that Baron as well. A big slip up in a big game for these teams. Of course, this probably means they're going to give up this next round, but they don't care. They're three to none on that count. They can use this moment, this pressure, to just keep sieging on through these towers. I don't know if LDLC need to. They're right. riding out this mid lane. They have the wave there. As we said, if you're diving onto Yesco, it's very difficult for them to take him down, take a good amount of HP off. Maybe that can help, but Price, he can just ult down to the fight if he wants to, even without the teleport. Got ways to join them right now. They're just trying to force their way through mid lane. Cries will claim that out of tower there. It's only the second tower of the game, so they've got okay. a lot of standing gold to get a hold of. So Dragon is going to be given up. There was the option to maybe head into that bot river, but it would have been away from Vision. LGLC, they say, look, we lose if we fight off the Vision, or at least there are options to lose. Yeah. So they don't give themselves that chance to be taken out at that point. Instead, taking multiple towers across the map instead, using the Baron push. They get a hold of Dragon. Do Unicorns love sexy and they get that bot lane tier one, but it comes at such a mighty cost. They will now face themselves a tricky next couple of minutes to try and stymie the bleeding. The LDLC will try and inflict with that Baron shove. So, Unicorns, what's your next move? Got to defend against this Baron push. They tried to cross map a little bit, but for the first time it feels like White. map control really starting to fall out the way. The gold is okay. I get jumped on, but chain's already gone. Hides in the wave, that's absolutely fine. Mask has himself a Shadow Flame second. There isn't a huge amount of um, MR built on no. the other side, so this is probably the best individual kind of tank killing you or HP stacking killing you're going to do. It's decent damage onto someone like White, but it's just not going to be very quick damage to kill someone like Yesler if you find option on it. Likely need to set up the four objectives where possible. Play it slow. Get the Leandro's yeah. burn second. Oh, going through mid lane tier one falls. <laughs> My days, that demonic bug certainly hit for it. A lot of damage on that tower. Now the siege is truly in. Teleport, deep teleport. Oh, then it's God, coming. Going. This will be the flank. Can they find the engage? Solar flank comes through. It's only a slow though. Now we're looking to go all out. Shove someone back through a tower. He's going to back on out. White, the flag and drag away. And the engage is stymied. Q3 goes wide. Teleport burned. The engage not found. LDLC OL disengage as a unit. Very organized disengage. The, uh, oh, it's the ultimate use from Backland actually trying to maybe catch someone out on that flank. But LDLC, very organized retreat. Get themselves that Shirelius for the move speed out. Keep themselves in that phalanx. Don't give any openings onto their AD carry, onto Yaskler. Unicorns swinging a miss from them, but it was a good angle. They attempted it. It was a nice idea, but the solar flex. Oh, oh wide! No, no. And the moment we start praising them for the attempt, Fanor gets caught. Gets caught, and that's a big moment. That's the front line down, caught across the map. Peach going for the invader on the other side now. His top lane has been caught. He's got to find his way out. He's got a blast go, but can he get close up? Flash towards it will get on out to safety with the extended range on the blast cone. But the ultimate and the flash burned in recompense. Oh, Werner having a bit of an awkward game. Felt like he over engaged around one of the first dragons in the game. That time felt like a better angle, but the overstay really kill it for unicorns. Werner goes down. LDLC take a little bit more control. The end of that, the end of that Baron push. They're not in the world's largest advantage. Still only that 2,000 gold lead, but managed to take more control off the map. And what we were saying about this, map control, vision control is very key to how these compositions play out. Trying to just either get at desire from different angles or protect those angles in their own way. Unicorns feeling a little bit blunted. They've not been uninspired, I will say that teleport no. was a good angle. Like I said, I don't mind that. The deep teleport finds some ways through that, through the little vision control they had, but feels like control slipping away from them. And it's the, I won't call them intangibles, but the things that don't, don't show per se in the gold, right? It's not that big a gold lead. 2,000 gold at this point they of the game. they show on the minimap in the form of war. So, they show on the minimap. <laughs> they show in terms of where you are at on the map. They show in terms of the dragon camp. Um, and of course, USC are going to be fighting an uphill battle against that dragon stacking. Yes, Kentek Soul is not considered the strongest soul in all comp in all compositions, but when you've got a bailout, when you've got a Scion, not well, the worst thing ever to be working with. Here. That's an ult. Hostile takeover goes wide, and Zeri will avoid that attempted uh, acquisition by Renata Glass Industries. Still, Tower Siege on to will be taken by LDSC OU ahead of this dragon for now. Three engage, Peach steps on forward, gets the slow yeah, down, Mask on the hit. side. The Korean duo trying to find as much damage as they can. They will change lockdown oh. on the white. Trying to play one out, in comes 
the teleport from LDLC looking to turn this one around. Cry is here as well. They're gonna turn this one around best they can, but White taking so low, but not before they get a kill onto the Zeria. One for one right now, made that a one for two. As Mask falls well, that's all the damage. Now Peach desperately low, not quite down as yet. Backland looking to find a final incinerate, and he leaves the ashes of Graves remaining. The Zaya doesn't die, but no, looking to clean up at least one oh. for the team. Can't do it. It's going to be a four for none across the map. Unicorns falling apart. At least Venna does survive, making it a three for none. But LDLC, they know the state of this game. It is, does Yeskla live when Unicorns come from him? They have the tools yet again to protect the Zaya. The irony, Yeskla, sorry, no, Yeskla, Venor goes all out, but it's the baseball turn because they were all out for none in that <laughs> fight, it felt like. And they attempt another engage. It doesn't work out. 20 seconds till Seoul, and no real way to contest. This is LDLC's all day, all week. So you do have teleports from both solo learners. There might be some semblance of a fight, but there's no Maybe. wars to teleport to. You'd be teleporting from your blue buff. It's on a control ward. You'd be seen on that vision. So we're going to assume that Seoul's going to go down during this replay. LDLC, one risk that they are going to run into is the fact that, you know, what happens when Sion isn't there? Sion's in a side lane at this point. Mac doesn't quite manage to land. Any of his skills, great time climbing on that Featherstorm. Just manages to get out of a couple of auto attacks too. Very, very close to getting that Zaya down. Would have had to go through the bailout as well. Maybe would have seen him through to that point. But still, Unicorns, another attempt to try and catch out LDLC in the mid lane, but they respond in very strong follow form. Shout out to Yesco as well with that attempted flash blade caller that was equally fastly flashed by the side of Funky, who needs to be very, very quick with his F key in that particular case. And then we saw this moment where an attempted pick at the end of it all just doesn't work out for Noah, who's just not been able to make these flanks work on Santa. Yeah. And we should probably talk about this top lane matchup as well, because Fry's Ooh, picks in days. this Scion, seeing, of course, this was going to be the Scion on, um, is in response to the red three pick mm. of Cassante. Done a really good job of just being the frontline threat. This Ooh, whole game has, this, this whole, this, this whole game has become about, what can we do when the Scion is not there? Because trying to go through this, you know, huge amounts of HP on that Scion is absolutely insane. Onto the Baron, maybe a steal opportunity, but that's the best Unicorns are going to get. You'll see all OL will be looking for the turn, surely. Otherwise, you can start to smell the burgers. It's a European special. Will it be an ERL special, though? But no, going to be turned on to. Needs to try and find a way out. Just still have the flash. The attempt is re -engage. It's not bad, but oh my god! Mask is torn to the ground and deleted. There was nothing hiding behind it. Funky falls as well. Your mid, ADC and support all die in quick succession alongside your top laner, four for none, and LDLC OL. Blink and you miss it. Delete the team fight and look to delete the game. Lethal turnaround from LDLC from the Baron P trying to run away. The stun lands. He's got to see the waves getting shoved into his base. The only masks which Mask is seeing are the Mask of the Kindred, killed so quickly in that fight, looking for one of those angles onto the Zaya. Couldn't find it yet again. The reigning champions of that titanic French region, LFL. LDLC OL start off their Amir Masters campaign with a dominating win. Unicorns, it did feel like they had a couple of those opportunities to unsettle LDLC. It, it did feel like there were a couple of times where they, 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 they understood what was up, right? Everyone knew the name of the game is get to the Zaya. The Zaya's ahead, the Zaya's got a front line in front of them. How do you get behind that? But yes, incredible disengage play from their team, incredible disengage play from themselves as well. And Unicorns, it felt like even though they understood the name of the game, they did not have the tool or the execution to really see that through. Yeah. Uh, and on the other side, for the side of LDLC OL, once things started going their way, once they found those cracks, particularly after that Baron sneak, it felt like they were very quick to really tear open that weakness and find that real chink in the armor and make it an unassailable advantage. They did an mm. exceptional job about taking the lead they it's, had and making something really, truly great out it of it. It is so cool, though, to see, like, both of these teams actually have some very interesting moments after, um, or rather, like, very interesting ways to think about the game, right? Yes. Very creative ways to think about it. I'm not going to just divert back to interest. It's more than that. It's creative. It is actually fairly good at kind of understanding the problems which were presented to both these teams after both of these teams were successful and then rebuilt to oh. become successful again. In this game, it felt like this fight was the closest the Unicorns got to one of those it miracle fights. So they just couldn't quite find all the kills they wanted to. So many sub-100 HP health bars, a couple more autos, another skill shot, and you're suddenly looking at a, a very different game, yeah. a very different team fight, but it wasn't to be. You know, I think back to the LTL, LDLC roster of last year, um, even though they didn't walk away with titles, they walked away with some hella good moments, and it felt like even in that iteration, 
they made you fight for every 100 of HP you take off of them. You don't get free fights versus them. And this was the fight which, of course, really ended up um, ending the game. It really felt like this was the only chance they had on Escalade in that late game. Just wasn't quite enough. A number of times, Unicorns were trying to punish the overforces in mid lane, the over pushes, but they just couldn't make it stick. Yeah, and you know, shout out to the likes of Mask and Peach as well. Peach getting big advantage in the jungle. Mask trying to put down quite a lot of hurt onto Backlund, but they never really managed to snowball anything to a particularly successful end. The gold stayed close despite the two Heralds, and then the fight started getting very ugly after a while. Diving into the Renata, into the Zaya was going to be tricky after a certain point, and these last few fights were very LDLC favorites. That they were. And, uh, you know, serious shout out to LDLC, a team which has been uh, exemplary in excellence in the LFL. This is a team which has just continually gone from strength to strength and set a full rebuild for them. Um, bringing in new players, bringing in some players from different regions. Talked about Cries, talked about Backland, um, who we know from the, uh, uh, the NLC of last year. Yeah. And they've managed to make themselves another very good, very confident team and very intelligent one of playing League of Legends. You're starting to see it there. Great damage out of Yeska, who had a very good laning phase alongside Zoelis, this rookie superstar that somehow LDLC have found again. My taste this team is very good at scouting talent. But on the other side, Unicorns of Love Sex Edition, you can see where they struggled to get the Zeri into the game. They struggled to get Peach to be truly terrifying in the jungle. And the gold was closed yeah. for a long time, and then it explodes. Yeah. And it, it, it also kind of felt like they didn't quite get that vision control as well. It's one of those, I know we kind of called it an intangible. It's something that you kind of like, you talk about as the game goes on, but when you actually look down to the mini map, when you switch the vision on and off, you start to understand how hard it is to look for those angles. Because again, going straight down the throat of a Zaya, it sucks. Hard. It sucks. Those feathers really, really hurt. We've seen several games now of that Zaya being very, very powerful in the first couple of games of uh, the group stage of EMEA Masters. And it feels like the AD carry matter of Zeri versus Zaya, it's well and truly arrived here. No one else has got any advances on that right now because no one has, knows how to deal with that Zaya on the defensive. And of course, back in the day, it was trying to pick champions that could blow the ult up easy, and that's not as well, much. Well, Quick Blades makes that really hard. Yeah, it's up exactly. That often. It's up so often, very tricky to deal with, especially with how potent some of her lane partners can be as well. She's got a lot of options now beyond just the Rakan, and that, that makes it very difficult to deal with. But again, a well-played game from LDLC. Oh, yeah. well, and I'm sure... Unicorns will be looking to bite back later on in the tournament because they definitely had their own angles there. We saw some moments like Backland got out on one HP. They got the Herald Charge. Yeah. It looked pretty good at points. It wasn't like they didn't have teeth mm. in this game. It just slipped no, away I, I, from I, as one, the game went on. I'm really looking forward to the rematch of these yes. two teams. Um, so we have been waiting, of course. We've been buying yes. a little bit of time for a very special interview. It's going to be an interview from the Unicorns of Love Sex Edition. I believe we have Sheepy joining us. Hopefully so. Hello, 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 everybody. Um, commiserations, unfortunately, there on the loss. But um, how are you guys feeling after that game one? It was always going to be a tough one against LDLC. But how do you feel the game played out on your end? I mean, we got a pretty big lead on the mid lane. And also, jungle was really far ahead. Um, I think both were in really comfortable positions. Uh, Graves got a second item. Um, on bot lane, also, I mean, it was not surprising when they picked the Javan that they will just play... Um, through both sides and try to pressure there with the Renata. Mm. And we blind picked Leona on four. So, I mean, everything kind of worked as normal. Maybe we have like kind of mm. the jitters or something like this, you know, like nerfs kicking in or something like this. But for sure, we missed a lot of cooldowns. Uh, we started especially with our melee champions that should not be running in so early. The fight's pretty early. <laughs> Um, when we want to, you know, like take take it more of a uh, short approach because they have Javan, Renata, Cyan. I mean, it will just take some time to kill them, and we don't have like a yeah. massive tank shredder. So, yeah, in short, I think that we didn't play out our comp perfectly, and uh, we're going back to the drawing board and do better next game. Yeah. So that's obviously a question about the game, about what happened here on the Rift. Would love to take a step back from that though, because you are currently holding an incredible record, an incredible um, string of results yourself as someone attached to this team. Of course, this team is something that you've really built from the ground up. How does it feel to have these, I believe, seven splits back to back? And after a rebuild like this, how does it feel to continue that su success through multiple iterations of these rosters? I mean, that's very cute of you guys. Thank you. Um, I mean, I didn't really. It's a lot to shout out. You're quite like good at it's this. It's a global record or something. <laughs> we want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm very happy uh, that I achieved that. I didn't like, I didn't realize it was actually the case since like somebody on EMEA Masters like posted it, posted it. So mm. I was surprised myself. You know, I'm like, holy shit, what's going on? What's <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, but I'm just uh, you know trying to 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 you know 
give the players what they need and then try to teach them the game and then somehow it's working out quite well. I'm very happy about this and especially because I'm working with Unicorns of Love so mm. it's my family so any kind of success directly translates to my family having success and I'm very, you know, I'm very happy about this so yeah, I, I can't explain it myself. I think I'm just, you know, I'm just fortunate. I got a good of uh, a little shocked about it. <laughs> in all of those players and uh, yeah, I think. Don't uh, tell them that we were shocked too. I know, right? That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't, one last don't question. Tell me, I suppose you might. Oh, no, sorry, I'm well, yeah. hot mic'd. Um, last question then before we have to let you go. Obviously, this year it's gone from being the EU Masters to being the EMEA Masters, and obviously mm -hmm. the regions that were strong are still strong. But we've got these new additions in Turkey and, of course, the MENA region as well, adding their names to the hat. So I guess from your perspective, who are you actually thinking are the front runners right now? Because perhaps the waters have been a little bit muddied with all these extra additions. So are there any teams you're going, yeah, they might surprise us being really scary as the tournament goes on? I do have to say that I think addition of new teams in the Emir Masters is always cool because you can have like new storylines and I mean Unicorns of Love as well was a team that was founded like with just fr five friends like guys just meeting up playing go for lols and then eventually making it to the LDC so I think those stories are really cool I think uh, you know Anonymous or how they are called Orbit we still have to play them Anonymo they had this uh, yeah they had a good game and um Overall, I'm interested in like the new teams as well. But yeah, I think obviously the the front runners should still be the French teams with LDLC and Gamers Origin, and uh, I think uh, our team should be there as well. Um, obviously, we will fix some of the stuff, so in the end, the result will be good. But if we're judging only our early game, at least that was, I hope, acceptable. But yeah, I think uh, LDLC Gamers Origin right now very strong. We'll hold you to the improvement. We'll look forward to seeing uh, a new and improved Unicorns of Love Sex Edition as you go on. Thank you very much for joining us, Sheep. We are going to let you go in. Maybe we'll see you back in summer after an eighth in a row, hey? Uh, until then, see you. Of course. Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome to talk with Sheep there. We've got quite a well, wide variety of answers there, well, which is no, super this, cool. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a team, which is so much history. I remember watching the very first games in 2015 as well. Great to kind of keep yeah. up the history in our region. Indeed, it is one of the most storied regions and teams within it, but enough for now. When we come back, LDLC OL will be hitting the rift again, but this time against E Suba. So go absolutely nowhere, guys, unless you need a refill of water or something. But once you've done that, sit right back down where you were. We've got another game coming right back up. Stay hydrated. You're gonna make it! You're gonna make it, dude! Come on! Stay with, work with me, yo, work with me. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Come on, let's, let's go. Oh, Trev. Oh. Help. Mark, you've done too much, dude. What can I get you? Give me that. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Are you guys being weird again? <laughs>